You are the light of the world. When Jesus spoke these words, he did so from an awareness that we have and we are a radiating, unlimited source of light. The indwelling Christ. The indwelling Christ is represented by the symbol of light. So this morning, we are lighting our Christ candle as a reminder of our responsibility to keep our light shining. And we invite everyone who is maybe joining us remotely to create your own sacred space by lighting your Christ candle. We'll begin this morning using the invocation written by Charles Fillmore. I am now in the presence of pure being. I am immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. I acknowledge thy presence, O divine power. O blessed spirit, in thy divine wisdom, now erase my mortal limitations, and from thy pure substance of being, thy pure substance of love, bring into manifestation manifestation our world according to thy perfect law. Now again, welcome everyone. I'm glad to see you. Welcome to Unity of Columbus. We are always aware that God is our source. Unity of Columbus inspires people to realize and express their divine nature in an awakening world. My name is Jewel Lean Henson. I'm one of your licensed Unity teachers here at Unity of Columbus. And again, I welcome you this morning. Our speaker today, I'm delighted to give you Cedric Miller. His topic today is Father, Give Me Strength. And we believe that all people are created with sacred worth. And we welcome everyone to join us. And with love and acceptance, we do our part, individually and collectively, to promote greater understanding among all people in a spirit of unity. Please join me in affirming our statement of faith. I'll speak it once and then we'll speak it together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God the good, all love. Together, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God the good, all love. I invite you to close your eyes and just for a moment hold in consciousness one thought in that statement of faith. Now take a deep breath, and from that consciousness and that focus, let us again affirm our statement of faith together. 
There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God the good, all love. And now, I'm gonna treat you again to the energy, the love, the joy. Bobby and Simone. Okay, everybody, this is the congregation song, so this is, <laughs> this causes for your participation, yes? So, you can stand and do whatever spirit needs you to do. It's called I'm Choosing Heaven, okay? Um, I'm choosing heaven. Trying, trying to get the key. Um, I'm choosing, I want to make sure I'm on the same key. I'm choosing heaven today. I'm choosing heaven today. I am walking the road of heaven right now. Singing, I'm choosing heaven today. I'm choosing love. I'm choosing love today. Are you choosing love today? I am walking the road of heaven right now, singing, I'm choosing love today. I'm choosing joy. I'm choosing joy. Today. Are you choosing joy? I'm choosing joy today. I am walking the road of heaven right now, singing, I'm choosing joy. I'm choosing peace. I'm choosing peace. Today. Are you choosing peace? Choosing peace today. I am walking the road of heaven right now, singing, I'm choosing peace. One more time, I'm choosing heaven. Choosing heaven, I'm choosing heaven. Are you choosing heaven? I am walking, walking the road of heaven right now singing i'm choosing heaven to i'm walking the road i am walking the road of heaven right now singing i'm choosing heaven today again thank you Unity is a movement, and Unity also is the publisher of the Daily Word, and our board president, Sydney Shear, will read our Daily Word for this morning. Let's give her a hand. Good morning. Today's Daily Word is Aspire. And the affirmation is, I aspire to help create a world that works for all. Can you repeat after me? I aspire to help create a world that works for all. I hold a vision of an equitable world, a global community that supports and encourages all people to live fully and reach their unique potential. I feel a kinship with those who hold a similar vision and work to realize it. My past experience and present perspective show me what is mine to do and how I can contribute to realizing my vision. I trust I will be guided and inspired to find avenues of service where the things I do best and most enjoy doing will be most helpful. I bless people I may never meet, and I offer my time, my talents, and my effort to further my vision of a new way of living. With clarity of purpose, I take my place among a growing network of caring, visionary souls. And from Ephesians 4, 11, 12, the gifts he gave were to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ. Thank you. 
Thank you, Sydney. Unity was founded <coughs> on the practice of prayer and recognizing the power and the presence of the divine in us and in our world. One of our practices here at Unity of Columbus is praying with others. In Unity, we do not pray to a God up there, out there. We pray instead from the consciousness of oneness, which can only come from God within us. In order to align our minds with the one divine mind of God, we must release the barriers that separate us in consciousness from the light and love of God. We must let go of fear and give way to love. We must become still and recognize that indwelling oneness, divine mind is in charge. And in so doing, we release all fearful, anxious thoughts about those for whom we pray so that we can know the truth for those individuals. If there is any thought towards anyone or anything in your past that is causing you suffering in this moment, I invite you to be free through the gift and the blessing of forgiveness. Forgiveness is an act of will. We must release our attachments to the past and we must let go in order to free ourselves. Will you join me this morning in affirming, I forgive and I am free together. I forgive and I am free. And from that consciousness of freedom, we now turn our attention to praying for others. I invite you to hold in prayer all the names. We have a prayer box out on the lobby and you can place names in at any point that you choose. Again, in unity, we do not pray to change others. We pray to change ourselves, to lift our consciousness to the divine. In that light, we see through the single eye of spirit, we affirm oneness, wholeness now. No longer do we see people as broken, poor, lost, or sick. Instead, we see them as children of God, full of light, love, and life. I invite you to picture each person with a smile on their face and light in their heart. And so that we may share that vision with you, I invite you to speak their names aloud here and now. James Wesley, my savior. James Wesley, that's his name. James Wesley, my savior. So I can smile. And I can cry. And I can wash my face in the water. And I won't have to wear a mask. Because I'm not sure. But I know it's you. And I swear to you, Sister Rosa, I have a hand in your heart. I swear to you. Oh, blessed spirit, we know that your answer to all prayer is yes. We celebrate and give thanks for this time of prayer, and we go forth with a mighty faith that all is in divine order. And so it is. And now, Jim, can we have some music as we prepare for meditation? Thanks. 
you to together let's take a deep cleansing breath and now we align our minds and our hearts with divine truth and with deep and abiding trust we are filled with joy, with peace, and with every cell filled with the color green, the divine power for the month of February. We see each cell a thrill with life, with joy, with peace, and love. And we know that the unfolding Christ within us is always active, always available. And for a few moments in the silence, we allow We have let go of any attachment to the past, and we now move forward with great expectancy and creativity, and we give thanks. Thank you, God. Amen. All right, well, good morning, everyone. You know, when I first walked up to the mic here, it was about this high, and I said, you know, I think that was Darren. He was up here a few moments ago. Yeah. Oh, that's special, special music that's for you. That's right. Sorry. <laughs> it's for you, Cedric. <laughs> this is called One Day at a Time. One Day at a Time. Sweet Jesus. Um, One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking of you. Give me the strength to do everything what I have to do. Yesterday's gone. Sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Help me today, show me the way, one day at a time. So we might be out of key. Will, will you get into the key that you have? Do you, you have it? One, one day. Okay. 
No, the very first one you just did sounded like that was right. You, you can start singing now. Okay. What can you, you do? Start singing, I'll play right there. Do what you do what you did. Just, just, not that one, but the one right before it. One. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking of you. Give me the strength to do everything what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Help me today, show me the way, one day at a time. I'm only human. I'm just a woman. Help me believe in what I could do and all that I am. Oh, show me the stairway that I have to climb. Lord, for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking of you. Give me the strength to do everything what I have to do. Ooh, yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Help me today, show me the way one day at a time oh do you remember when you walk among me well jesus you know if you're looking below that is worse now than then Oh, there's pushing and shoving, and it's crowding my mind. So, Lord, for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking of you. Give me the strength to do everything what I have to do. Ooh, yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Help me today, show me the way, one day at a time. Help me today. Help me today, show me the way, one day at a
Wow, that was great. Thank you, Jim, Simone, Bobby. Just absolutely. Can we get him another hand? I'm in. Feeling the spirit. Feeling the spirit. You know, that song reminds me of when I was growing up in the South. I was a little boy back in the 70s. And you, I used to always hear that song uh, coming out of people's houses. You know, they had the record player back, back in those days and such. And there was this little factory, a little textile factory in our town. And, you know, people had it tough, maybe making $2.25. Cent. But they always went to that song one day at a time. And, and that was a part of strength. And you would hear at times, particularly at church, or you can even hear in your neighborhood, you know, some uh, person would cry out, finally, give me strength. Give me strength. And that's what the, the word for unity is this month, is strength. Strength. And the amazing thing about strength is this. Kids have strength. And by the way, let me acknowledge, if this is your first time here at the church, raise your hand. We're so happy to have you here today. We see kids out in the audience. Can we give a <laughs> clap to the family there? Yeah, it's always good to see. Kids have strength. And even, you know, back in those days and such, you know, things were tough and such, you always saw kids. Kids always had that resilience and such, and that lifts our spirit also. You know, for some of us, you know, once we get around to the age of 50, we start singing that song, Drop Kip, Drop Kick Me, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Through the gold post of life. So we want to just keep that strength going every day. Now, what is the word strength? It's the ability to endure, 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 to stay the course, to persevere. We've all shown that here in the last couple of years in our country and such, being there for each other through COVID and all the other things that happened and such. And we all persevered and we're here today. And again, for our, our audience here on internet, we're happy to have you. And anytime you're here in Columbus, please do stop at Uni of Columbus. We have a lot of nice people. We have good food, by the way, if you hadn't heard that. And also like and subscribe to our channel there so you can hear this message and other messages and great messengers that have come through. So again, we're talking about strength. And also during the month of February here, this is Black History Month. And Unity also acknowledged Black History Month through its teaching. But I want to share something with you. Many of you, I'm sure you heard of Harriet Tubman. She was a strong, strong, strong woman, uh, African-American woman during the 1800s. And they called her Moses also because she would leave from the north here and go down south and bring slaves back here through Ohio, up through Michigan, and on over to Canada. But she was interviewed once about how she feels and you know, how she does the things that she's done. And she said, God, time is always near. He set the North Star in the heavens. He gave me strength in my limbs. He meant that I should be free. Strength. And we're going to get to strength because it's in all of us. It's in all of us. Strength. To overcome anything. To overcome anything. So Black History Month, again, is the remembrance of contributions of people of African descent. Uh, Black History Month is recognized here in the U.S., uh, in Canada, Ireland, and uh, United Kingdom. Now, how did Black History Month start? It was started in 1926 by a historian by the name of Carter G. Woodson and the Association for the Study of Af uh, Negro history and the announcement of Black History Month coincides with two very historic individuals. Their month birthday is in the month of February, and then that's Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. So we want to thank them for.
for their contribution to give us this world that we have today where we're living in unison. And Unity states that African Americans played a vital role in the development of the spiritual movement of unity, celebrating and commemorating those leaders that helped propel us towards a more loving, inclusive, and connective consciousness, evolving and we reached to greater understanding of our oneness. In unity, of course, we believe there's one presence, one power, God the omnipotent. So this thing we're talking about here again is strength. And a lot of people have always said, where is the strength from? I was talking with a friend just the other day. I was on YouTube and I saw this, this lady and she was talking about that she had a near death experience. And hers was a lot different than those that I've heard before. You usually hear people, they're, they're in the hospital or whatever, and they see their body kind of floating up in the air, and they see everyone worked on it. But hers is a little different. She said that she, when she had her near death experience, she was going up these stairs, and she saw this light. And as she went up these stairs, she saw some panels, panels. And these panels were listing all the things that she agreed to do before she got here. And she said, to the right of that panel, the answer was, you didn't, you didn't accomplish this. Then another panel came out. It was about some other things that she was supposed to accomplish. And it said, nope, you didn't accomplish this. Well, anyway, she lived through this and such, but it, it allowed me to think about what are the things that I myself was sent here to do and you can even think about yourselves. What are the things that you were sent here to do and haven't we done it? And I was talking to my friend Terrence and I said, Terrence, you know, I know, I know. And usually we know by the age of 35, 40, we know. I said, I know the things that I'm supposed to accomplish, but sometimes I just feel tired. You know, at the end of the day and such, you're going through your regular work week and such and it's, yeah, maybe I was supposed to write that book. Or maybe I was supposed to do this or supposed to do that. But I'm coming to find out that if I ask God for strength, and I experienced that this week, I said, I know these are the things that I'm supposed to do. And it's not just in our work life. It's in our personal life. These are the things I'm supposed to do. Give me strength. And believe me, I have a teenage daughter, and I have to say that all the time. <laughs> on, the way, on the way to church this day, I said, give me strength. And she challenged me quite a bit. And so this power, again, it's inclusive, and it resides in all of us. In all of us. In all of us. And I'm speaking from experience. I remember some years ago, I think it was back in 2003, my mom had passed and it was just a very, very tough time. And anyone who knows when you lose a parent, that is just a whole different world there. And I was at Unity in Michigan there, Renaissance Unity. Anyone remember Renaissance Unity, Marianne Williamson and all that? And, uh, but I came across this lady that was speaking that Sunday. Her name was Edwin Gaines. Has anyone heard of Edwin Gaines? Yeah. Well, Edwin is from Alabama, and she wrote this wonderful book. It's called The Four Spiritual Laws of Prosperity. And she was speaking to everyone, and she said that, you know, at the end of her class, she said, you can give a donation. And if you don't have a donation, just, you know, just give what you can give. And I remember during that time, things were really tight. But I had bought these angel coins. At the church, you could buy like a pack of angel coins. And I remember giving her one of those. And uh, I went up to Edwin. And this is the first time I found out about strength. And I knew Edwin knew what strength was. She knew it. I mean, when she stepped on the stage, you can just feel power coming from her. And I said, uh, 
I said, Miss Gaines, I said, you know, I'm from Alabama like you. She said, well, you must be a strong man. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah. And I remember just, she spoke to my consciousness. And then during the rest of the week, and over time, I found my strength. And I kept developing that and developing that. So the Course in Miracles in Lesson 92 says that miracles are seen in light. And light and strength are one. Light and strength are one. You're probably saying to yourself, okay, so to get around to how I get the strength stuff. I'm going to drag it out a little bit. I'm just drag it out a little bit more. And this strength, again, is within all of us. But the one thing that we do, particularly us here in Unity, we read a lot of books, a lot of books. And that's great. And I remember myself, during that time at Unity, I bought a lot of books. And during that time, you get a lot of CDs and such also. And I remember listening to Dr. Wayne Dyer and all these spiritual leaders and Deepak Chopra. He has a great book called The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. And he was speaking of the self, the self. And Marianne Williamson put it like this. There's two different selves. There's two different selves. And it, if you read a lot of literature and such, and uh, I can't think of the other book that I'm thinking at the time, but there's two selves. There's the large self, which is the capital S, and there's the small self. And Deepak Pat Chopur call it the ego and then the, the self. The self is our connection with spirit, our connection with spirit. And when we have that self, if, when you read Deepak's book, it says you're not afraid of any challenge. You're not afraid of any challenge. And you know, I remember hearing uh, this person speak the other day, a celebrity, she said, if I just didn't have fear, I would do so much. There's so much I want to do, but it's just that fear thing that keeps me from doing the thing that I want to do. How many of us out there, there's things you want to do, and then we have that what's called a terror thing that comes up and said, nah, I'm just not going to do that. But if you look at kids, right, kids aren't afraid to do anything. You go into a first grade class and you said, how many people are going to be a, a fireman? Me. How many people are going to be an astronaut? Me. You know, kids are just, they are still connected to their spirit. And if you watch kids, you know, Jesus said, you know, these little ones here, they're, they're teachers. Pay attention to them. You know, but how do we lose that over time? How do we lose our connection over time, because by the time we get around maybe 10 to 12 or so, we begin to, that doubt begin to seep in. You know, the things that we thought about as we were a child, we begin to say, you know, maybe that's not possible. And we hear other adults and television and all that tell us that this isn't possible or that isn't possible. But you know what? There is such thing as a renaissance, meaning that you can go back and connect with that spirit again and can pick up where you left off as a kid. And a lot of times we we're asked, even uh, psychologists, they said, go back to the age of when you were 15, 15. What are the things that you wanted to do? Because that's a prime age of when we really have our mission that we came here to do. And over time, of course, we have counselors and all these people who tell us, no, you should go into this or go into doing that. But if you think back to the time you were 15, what was that goal that you want to do? And by the way, it's never too late. It is never too late to do the things that you want 
to do. So in metaphys metaphysically, the definition of strength, again, is the energy of God. You hear that? It's the energy of God. A lot of times we take God and we have God over here and we say, well, I'm going to rely on God. That's when we disconnect. Our goal is connect with the energy of God. And that energy is there. Now, you may say, well, how can you prove that? How can you prove that that energy is there? Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever been to a concert or something like that and you're just lost in, you know? Or how about the first time you fell in love? You know when you fall in love with somebody the first time and you're in love and you go out the door and you say, I can accomplish anything. You know, that's why some, a lot of these celebrities, particularly men, they stay married because they feel that energy when they're connected with that person that makes them feel alive. That's God's energy. That is God's energy. So you're feeling it. You don't have to go and read a book about is it true or whatever. But again, what we want to do is connect with that energy and not have to rely on another person to give that to us. And I'm going to give you the answer. I'm, 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 I'm timing all of this because I found it by accident myself. You know, I found it by accident. No, 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 I didn't find it by accident. What I did was ask. See, in Matthew 7, 7, and it's amazing that it's 7, 7, because that, that means complete and complete. It says, ask, and it shall be given to you. Ask. 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 That's when we really begin to figure out where our faith is. See, a lot of times with spirit, with God, with angels and such, we say, yeah, it's true, but, but I don't know. We just leave that little seed of doubt in there. And that's why we're not getting what we're getting. Believe me, I've been put in several situations, in job places and such, where it was like you got to have the answer in like 30 minutes or your career is about to implode. And I would always step into this room and I would say, what do I do? What do I do? And I'll walk a couple of feet and then, bing, the answer's right there. Go back in the room. Oh, this is the answer here. Wow, where do you get that? Now, did it happen once? No, it's happened hundreds of times. Hundreds of times. You know, the Bible says you have not because you do not ask. And again, with Matthew 7, 7, it says, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Have we asked? Have, are we seeking to be connected with God again? To our spirit? Those little kids there? They're not walking around thinking about, Oh, my God. They're just enjoying life. They're free and, and connected and, you know, I heard a speaker once say that when you're a kid, when it's time to go to bed, they're like, no, 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 I don't want to go to bed. I don't want to. They said, but kind of you come to become an adult, it's like, oh, God, I got to get to bed. <laughs> you know? So seek. Ask and you shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Not, and it shall be open unto you. It shall be open unto you. Anything, 
anything. But I think sometimes what happened is we live in a world where we think we have to do things for ourselves. Maybe we're actually doing too much work. You ever decide to step back and say, I remember a conversation once that Deepak Chopra had in a conference that he had, and he said, you know, actually we do too much. We actually do too much. What are the things that I should do? When you get that intuition or that push to say, go do that. That's what you go do. Have you ever got a notion? You know, give such and such a call. Or hey, you need to do this here by tomorrow. Listen to those things. Matter of fact, write it down. You know, use it as a, a, as a challenge this week. You know, listen, listen. You know, have a little notebook by you. Just a little notebook. Have it in your car or have it by your bedside. And when you get one of those, one of those intuition things, to pop, it just pops in like that, write it down. Don't let it go. Write it down. You may say, well, why should I do this? It's, it's, it's going to be way beyond your understanding of why you're doing it. And you may not ever know why, why you are doing it. But just do it anyway. And see how your week changes by the end of the week when you do that. And so we come to the big question. Okay. How do I connect to myself? I had been reading books and books and books and books. And one day, I got to the point of saying, I can't figure this out. I've read Deepak Chopra, I've read this book and this book and this book and this book and this book. And it turned out to be a very, very, very simple thing. And again, the, the most difficult things in life have the easiest answer. And there I was. And all of a sudden, this voice came through and said, say this, I believe in myself. That's what the voice told me. Just say to yourself, Cedric, I believe in myself. And at that point, I just had this extreme confidence. Yeah, it was like the next day at work and stuff. People were like, is that the guy I knew yesterday? You know? Now, who is yourself? That is the God spirit within. You never want to be led to believe in a book or to believe in a person who's telling this or that. This, this is a personal experience. Yourself is within. Yourself is not like this guy that's wearing this blue jacket and or this lady that's wearing this dress. No, that's not yourself. That's your small self or the ego or your character that you carry throughout the week to everyone. But your true self with the capital S is within. And when you acknowledge it, when you acknowledge it, you will be connected. All you have to do and you don't have to do it here because I believe that when you do it, you have to be seated by yourself and very conscious when you, when you make this declaration is that I believe in myself. And that turns on the engine. And watch how your life changes. Watch how your life change. 
And I look forward to hearing a report. And for those people out there on the internet too. You know, I could have said, hey, you gotta sit down and read this 900 page book. Or hey, you gotta go to a mountain in the Himalayas and you know, yell over, yell across this river there and then go down and you know, watch your foot. But no, it's just as easy as sitting down and saying, I believe in myself. And that's acknowledging, that's acknowledging your true nature of who you are. And kids have that automatically. I mean, they have that knowing. And with that, that's the secret. And you don't have to go out and buy the CD, CD The Secret. Because when you connect with yourself, you will have that joy. You have that light. And that's what it is. That is what light is. It's yourself. It's you shining. It's you and God's spirit connected. And do you have to run out there and chase everything down then? No. It comes to you. Because people are going to be looking at you like, hmm, there's just something about that person. I should hire this person. You know, they need to be in my company. Or, wow, there's just something about this person. I want to invite them to be on my committee. You know, I was looking for a new friend. and This person got this light in them. And, you know, all these things will begin to manifest because you're connected to spirit. And spirit is love, right? Right? Who, who, who doesn't love love? Is anybody who walked up to somebody and said, hey, do you have a problem with love? <laughs> nah. Nah. Most people like love. Yeah. It's a good thing. And so with that, I wish you a wonderful remainder of the month of February, which is, by the way, the month of love. God's spirit. Belief in oneself. And with that, look, we have a I have an affirmation here that I'd like to share. And that is, I have the strength to accomplish all that is mine to do. I have the strength to accomplish all that is mine to do. Thank you, namaste, and have a good rest of your day. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful message. So what are we going to do? We're going to choose love right now. How about that? <laughs> but you're going to believe in yourself, yes? yes? All right. Peace in my life is growing because I choose the love. Love's always present. It's what I'm made of. I choose the love. We are a part of each other. We tie that binds us it can't be undone I choose love peace in my family is growing because I choose love let love be present it's what we're made of. I choose love. We are a part of each other. We are one. One loving family sharing one son. I choose love. Peace for our 
planet is growing because I choose love. Let love be present is what we're made of. I choose love. We unites us this be the one I choose love I choose love I choose I choose love I choose Jim, thank you, Bobby and Simone. Uh, thank you, Cedric Miller. Thank you for that lesson on strength. It was so inspiring. And now is the time in our service when we tie the gifts of our treasure. We prosper through the act of giving. Our ministry is supported by your tax-deductible gifts, love offerings, and we are grateful for you. We live in an abundant universe, and I invite you to affirm with me our offering blessing. I'll speak at once and invite you to repeat it. Divine love as me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. Together, divine love as me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give and all that I receive. And I am grateful. And we give thanks for all of you for being here. We give thanks for all of those who have joined this service either remotely and hopefully it was a wonderful experience that will enrich you for the rest of this week or forever. Again, we're gonna give thanks to Jim Maneri our music and technical director. Again, to our speaker, Cedric Miller. And now for our announcements. First of all, we have our appreciation brunch being presented by our board of trustees. That's today in Wilson Hall. We also want to bring your attention to the Linton book that's available in the lobby. Okay. <laughs> it's a young lady back there. She's very enthusiastic. That's great. Uh, let's see. What other announcements? Oh, yes. I want to bring everybody's attention to this chart. It's very colorful. It's the 12 powers. Darren put this together through his own creativity, but it will give you a lot of insight into the 12 powers and how we're using them in our service today. And also, we're going to start a series that's to be determined. You'll be hearing more about it, but our current minister, Reverend Dan Holloway, has written a book called Knowing God More. It's an introspective 40-day guide, and Darren, Darren will give you more information about it later. We're going to be doing a Lenten service using this. When will we start, Darren? 
Ash Wednesday. When, what date is Ash Wednesday? The 22nd, that's this week. Okay, if you want to hear, oh, it's on the slide, I'm sorry. It's going to be doing, he's going to do that using um, Zoom, and it'll be our midweek uh, renewal services. It starts this Wednesday, February 22nd, and study will continue at 9.30 in the mornings on Sunday, so we'll have a Sunday school during Lent. So avail yourself of this wonderful opportunity. All right, thank you, everyone. All right, so now is our time in our service where let's stand and affirm our prayer for protection. Mm. I'm hoping most of you know it, but some of you are new. It's on this, oh, thank you. <laughs> Yes, let's do this together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Thank you. In closing, let us raise our consciousness, one person, one mind, one heart, one soul at a time. And let us now sing, Let There Be Peace on Earth. And as we go forward this week, this month, this year, we affirm, I have the strength to accomplish all that is mine to do. We can repeat that. I have the strength to accomplish all that is mine to do. Have a great week, everyone.